sense. Good evening. I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of the Forest School Committee for Monday, April 8th, 2019 to order. Madam Secretary, would you please take the roll? Mr. Agia? Here. Mr. Coogan? Here. Mr. Costa? Here. Mr. Hetza? Here. Mr. Corey? Here. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. Once again, I'm going to ask everyone in attendance to please join me as we salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag, flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> we did have a sign-up sheet for citizens input does not look like anyone has signed up but I will ask for the record if there's anybody that wishes to speak for citizens input please come forward I don't see anyone next agenda item is the recognition awards there are no recognition awards on this evening's agenda next item is the superintendent's report at this time I'll turn it over to dr. Malone Mr. Superintendent. So, uh, great update that uh, this week, this past week, the uh, Suffolk Construction and uh, Resendez and uh, J.O. Marshall, the uh, uh, contract contractors, have begun uh, to pour the footings and the foundation uh, for the new building. And if you haven't seen the photos that we've been putting on uh, Twitter, uh, the, 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 the way the building is going to wrap right around the football field is absolutely amazing and it really you get a sense now of exactly how big the project is uh, and they're absolutely a grade right now they're uh, a foot and a half uh, below the actual uh, uh, first floor of the building and that's what will be uh, poured next so if you have a chance to go by if you have time uh, call me uh, we'll go up put a hard hat on we'll go out and see uh, see what is going on but the uh, iron workers have been uh, exceptional the carpenters that are building the forms uh, the rebars uh, have been uh, installed tied and uh, you're gonna see a lot of progress uh, over the next few weeks as uh, these concrete pours continue uh, concurrent with that of course and I think you know we got credit Matt Damaris and, and his team really doing a, a great job uh, planning uh, all of the uh, handoffs if you will uh, as the new parking lots are coming online and old parking lots are going offline and how we're uh, going to get ready soon to uh, start the retrofit of the field house and move the uh, parent information center uh, and uh, it's, it's a ton of work but it's, uh, it's really exciting. I want to thank Ken uh, and uh, the whole uh, building committee uh, and uh, all else who were involved in this uh, great project. So that's the status update uh, of where we are. Superintendent, before you go any further, I just want to, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20E, I just want to, for the record, pursuant to the open meeting law, any person may make an audio or video recording of this public meeting or may transmit the meeting through any medium. Attendees are therefore advised that such recordings or transmissions are being made, whether perceived or unperceived, by those present and are deemed acknowledged and permissible. I stand in error. I apologize uh, to my colleagues. Mr. Superintendent, the floor is yours. Sure. So the, uh, the next uh, milestones that, uh, that you'll see uh, is, the, is the completion of the footings and the arrival of the structural steel. The structural steel is placed on top of the footings, uh, and you'll see the cranes come in and begin that work uh, this spring. Uh, all the utilities and the over-excavation have now been uh, connected and tied off. Uh, so now we have uh, gas, water, electrical, and fiber, uh, all and phone, all through the uh, the site and tied off uh, in the area behind the concession stand. Uh, and we just poured a temporary uh, long jump and the paved the uh, inner area between the two turf fields. So now we have access in case uh, uh, we need to get a vehicle on, but uh, that's fully paved now as well. So uh, again. Uh, it's just an exciting time for this building project and I look forward to uh, the next few weeks as the weather gets uh, continually better and, and the work crews uh, just continue to, uh, to uh, expedite the process. In terms of the MCAS, uh, we are knee deep in uh, testing this past week and this week and then I believe another week after that, after vacation uh, with makeups. But I do want to just call out that 
Uh, Frank Farias and our whole tech team did a great job working with all our building principals and the site level technicians to ensure that we had access. We're testing online across the entirety uh, of the system. Uh, things have been going very well uh, in that regard in terms of the bandwidth and, uh, and all the uh, intricacies of uh, online testing. We did hold for the first time ever our MCAS pep rally at, uh, at all the schools, uh, which was well received. We had shirts, and I want to thank the seniors. I mean, you gave an amazing speech. If you haven't seen the speech that he gave, you got to see it. I'm going to get that from Maria Ponce, and I'll send it to you guys. Uh, but outstanding speech about really what it means to be a, a student of Fall River Public Schools and why every single day we got to keep, keep, keep fighting and doing our best and ensuring that uh, we always give 110%. Uh, and what was also really cool about that day was the, uh, we got cool t-shirts. And, and this year's, what's our theme this year? everything we got. So we stole the Patriots theme and we went with it too. Uh, and uh, it's been an outstanding uh, 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 year in that regard. They won a Super Bowl. We're going to win the MCAS Super Bowl this year. Uh, and again, it's not always just about testing, but it is what's used to measure accountability. So we're going to do our best. Uh, and, uh, and I'm proud of uh, all the teachers and paraprofessionals and staff and everyone else who's uh, worked with the kids and then the tenants has been up during this time. I'm really happy about that. I think the principals did a great job talking to parents about student attendance and our faculty attendance has also been great and, and uh, those are exciting things to make sure that everyone's here every day and, and uh, I think that really sets a good tone uh, around morale. Of course, this is the tough time of the year. We just got through March. Not one vacation day in March, right? The Ides of March. That's the 15th. Um, St. Patrick's Day, too. But the uh, March is a tough month. We got through March, and now we're in April. The weather's nice, and we're going to have a vacation next week. Everyone that's watching on TV right now, just know that you don't have to go to school next week. And that's going to be an exciting time to get some sleep, go out and rake the yard and do whatever you got to do, uh, and uh, get back from that push through June. This is it, and uh, let's just keep going, and I uh, look forward to a really good meeting tonight. That's it. Thank you, Dr. Malone. Next item is the student comment, student delegate report. We do have uh, three items this evening. Turn it over to Samaya. Thanks. <coughs> I'm sorry, this is on the agenda today. But um, this week is actually Youth Funds Prevention Week, and so my mayor's youth council peers and I, uh, we're trying to come up with ideas to implement into the schools around the city, um, as well as getting Diamond involved. We are I'm hoping to be meeting with Mr. Damaris, or at least bring our ideas to him, as well as uh, the student government advisor, Mr. McNeely, in hopes to bring some of these activities um, to Durfee, either Thursday or Friday. So, thank you. Thanks, Samaya. Kyle? Good evening, everybody. Um, I'd just like to open by talking about a wonderful experience I was able to take place in this past Friday. As the president of student government, I went on a field trip with our advisor and vice president to the state house. And we actually got to sit in the chamber and vote on legislation and talk about ongoing bills taking place in the state house. And it was just a great opportunity. So I think that's a great thing to bring up. As for events occurring at Durfee, we just had Neon Night this past Friday night, which was a school dance run by the students. And we had a really good turnout. About 150 students showed up. And it seemed as if almost everybody there had a great time. Um, one of the big things that I want to talk about today is an ongoing process taking place within student government. And I printed out lots of very detailed forms for my fellow school committee members. But we're currently drafting a proposal for a color run that's going to be citywide that we can use in order to promote awareness for anti-bullying and mental health. and. There's a task force on anti-bullying and mental health that's been going on across the city. And we've reached out to schools like Atlantis Charter, Diamond, and Bishop Conley. And we've started talking and working together as what the next steps will be. So I'll pass those out once the meeting's over. Um, as for Tutors for Toppers, which is that student-run tutoring group, we've actually had a couple of students meet already. We've broken ground. We've had a couple of meetings and we're definitely looking to grow off of that and make the club even bigger so that more students can help their peers grow in school and that we can improve scores. 
And last but not least, I just finished speaking with Mr. Damaris about um, our I Am Fall River t-shirt sales for the month of April. We're hoping to take all profits and do a, um, a fund where we can help seniors pay off cap and gown fundraisers. So for anybody who may not be able to afford the $35, we'll be able to use money from the shirt sales to help fund that so that every student is dressed in a cap and gown as they cross the stage. And that's about it. Thank you, I yield. Thank you, Kyle, and thank you, Samaya. Next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes for March the 18th, 2019 for the Finance Subcommittee as well as the regular meeting of the Florida School Committee. Is there a motion? So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Coogan. Roll call. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yep. Mr. Martins? Mary Correa. So then we'll travel request on this evening's agenda. Is there a motion to approve all travel? So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzel. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Corey. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? The ayes have it. Next agenda item is the request for donations. There is a motion to accept all donations. So moved. Made by Mr. Coogan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hetzler. All those in favor? Aye. All opposed? So voted. Mr. Superintendent, if you would, for the record. Sure. Uh, from fuel up to 60, Spencer Borden was awarded $4,000. From Bay Coast Bank to the Office of Instruction, $600. <clears throat> from Donors Choose to Watson Elementary, $418.16. And also from Donors Choose to Watson Elementary, $196. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Thank you to all our donors. Next agenda item is contracts as listed. Is there a motion to approve contracts as listed? So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Coogan. Any discussions on the contracts? Mr. Corey. I'm uh, curious to know what's the one goal contract? What is that? It's so number four. Yeah, so um, one goal is a program, I'm gonna let uh, Drew talk a little bit more about, uh, but one goal is a program that we brought into uh, Durfee High School, I believe three years ago now, uh, and it's a program that focuses on college ready development and then stays with the students while they're in college. And I'll let uh, Drew speak more about it. Is, uh, sorry. One goal is uh, a program that we brought in that targets first generation low income students and supports uh, them not only getting into college but graduating from college. Uh, so one of our teachers serves as um, uh, an advisor during their junior and senior year, has those students uh, for an elective period and then actually um, serves in an advisory uh, role during the student's uh, first year in college. So the one goal contract um, uh, gives the support, the technical support, and also the curriculum that the teachers use uh, both junior and senior year. Um, and we've seen some good uh, results in terms of reduced chronic absenteeism, increased uh, GPA for the students involved in the program, as well as increased SAT scores. Um, so a lot of the programming is to make the, the students more academically, uh, uh, help their academic achievement, as well as uh, to help them kind of uh, do some goal setting and do some identity development so that they can pick uh, the right college match for themselves. What are the numbers, Drew? Uh, we have two cohorts of juniors and two cohorts of seniors. Um, so we have about 50 in each grade. 50? Yeah. 50 junior, 50 senior? That's right. Thank you. I yield. Any further questions or comments regarding any of the contracts as listed? Roll call, Ms. Um, uh, Madam Secretary. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzler? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. Next agenda item of the grants. Is there a motion to approve the grants as listed? Make a motion to approve, Vice Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Motion made by Mr. Corey. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hetzler. Any discussion on the grants? Hear an unroll call, please. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzler? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. First order of business this evening's discussions is a discussion on the FY20 for a public school transportation. <laughs> presented by Mr. Ken Pacheco, Chief Operating Officer. 
Ešte počíkam. So uh, in the packet um, was a uh, response to some questions that were asked by the committee, some of which were asked at the FNO uh, subcommittee meeting and also uh, some questions that were asked at the general meeting. Uh, those responses are here. I have um, here this evening Mr. Rich Labrie from Futures um, to go into any in-depth conversation um, to answer the committee members. Uh, we have uh, some comparisons, similar districts, and how those contracts were, uh, were played out uh, in the very recent um, um, round of, of uh, bids. And uh, there's also a recommendation page that's attached here, which you have seen um, at the previous meeting. If there's any questions, I can answer. Any questions for Mr. Pacheco first, and then we'll bring Mr. Labrie from Futures forward, and members have any questions for Mr. Labrie, we can ask those. Any questions for Mr. Pacheco at this time? Mr. Chair. Hearing none. Oh, Mr. Hetzel, please. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question about the software. Uh, I know it's in the notes here. You'll have the software installed on vacation? So school vacation, the training will start. Okay. And so when, do you, when do you think we'll be able to manipulate the data? It'll be about... Um, Probably 30 days, within right. 30 days. They'll be, part of the training is going to be our routes, so they'll be training doing our uh, particular routes. So it's not going to be just training and then we're starting the routes. We'll be doing that as part of the training. So hopefully we'll be able to identify additional cost savings. Yes, yes. Excellent, thank you. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Hetzler. Mr. Corey? Yeah, Ken, on, um, on the bids chart, I'm noticing that our per bus per day is, is at a lower, to the lower of average than most of the other surrounding towns and communities? They are. Why is that? I, I think it's just the economy. So basically our, our rates down here have been historically lower than the rest of the state. Um, and uh, these contracts are in areas um, where there was probably um, larger companies, bigger routes, uh, longer, you know, yeah. So it's, it's more costly in other communities. So I'm, I'm wondering, I'm trying to imagine what the trajectory of other communities are facing as far as transportation costs and if it's relevant to what we're going through here. I think the city of New Bedford is pretty similar to our uh, new costs, about $11 million. Um, they've just went from private, uh, from uh, uh, self-performing. They were, had their own buses, now they're on private contracts. And um, they're about the same as we are. We're a little higher than they are um, at the 11.9, but um, they're running about 11. Any idea what it's looking like in other parts of the state, other regions? Other than these here, so um, I don't have totals on these contracts, just a per bus. Yeah, just, just. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I just, I mean, New Bedford, we, um, you know. In we did other regions checking. clearly higher than us. Depending on, yeah, depending on the size of the school district also. So I'm trying to uh, determine what the trajectory overall is looking like in transportation as an industry factor and, and what, what we're prone to here in our region trying to deal with that. That's what I'm trying to figure out. I, I think that it's tough to compare us to other districts because a lot of other districts are um, maybe more closer to the state regs so that they're transporting it after two miles. Um, as opposed to us with one mile. Uh, so I think they've done uh, some other things uh, that we haven't looked into. Uh, and again, before we built the mega schools, we didn't have a transportation issue. So, right. you know, it, there's a lot of the other communities that don't have the, the new assets that we have. It came with the price. Sure. You know, transportation is it, but um, it, uh, it is also suited as well um, to have those buildings. So. I, I think it's a tough comparison um, to look at uh, like communities, Springfield and Brockton. Those communities are in the same shape that we are, though, as far as numbers. Thank you. Stagia? Two questions. Uh, we talked before about the issue of the one and a half to two miles to do some yes. analysis. Is that? I haven't finished the analysis. Um, I, the, the one thing that, um, that was brought to light in all of this is that the state, the state mileage is two miles and then they would like you to set up bus stops within a mile of the 
students. So basically the students would walk up to a mile to a bus stop and then the bus would transport from those particular locations to the school. So that would obviously be a cost savings because the routes would be tighter and within that mile um, you could set those basically like mega stops up in different areas of the city and those buses would be transporting from those spots. So it doesn't take away the door-to-door -door service that we would be providing by by uh, law, but um, it does help out with the regular bus routes. And you do an analysis on the door-to-doors and w whether we're transporting more than what we have to? Um, so we, we had reduced the last two years. We've had reductions in the door-to-door, -door and um, we will be looking at that again. And the other one was on the gate program? Same thing? The same thing. So I think that's important to get those issues because, uh, as I said before, we cannot, just can't afford that kind of Absolutely. Interest. Uh, but the last meeting, we asked you questions about when we, if we rejected the bids, yes. what your timeline is, and you said that the April 8th meeting would be fine. My only concern now is that it doesn't look like we're voting on those bids today, and so if we kick the can down the road a little more, are we putting so the ourselves only, in Yeah, the I think the only issue we're going to have, uh, Mr. Aguiar, is... Uh, the longer we take, the tougher it's going to be for the bus companies to get buses so, and have them ready for September. So I think that's what we're backing up against. I'm sure that any of the bus companies that are the lowest bidders would give us an extension if we needed a time extension. The problem is, is that I think there's going to be a point where they're not going to be able to deliver the buses, the, the, those that need to buy you know, new buses. I don't think any of the companies are buying the total number that we need. I think they're supplementing their fleet. But I, I do believe that there, there's going to be a point where we're not going to be able to have all of the buses necessary. Um, so I have not got that date from anyone because we're still within the, the awarding date. Um, but I, I'm sure that's When that's does that coming. run out? Do we had know? 60 days from February 28th. And our next meeting is when? Would be in May. So, so it's after that deadline. Right. So, I mean, I'm, I think I made it pretty clear where I stood on the issue last week. I'm, I was prepared tonight to make a motion to throw the bids out. Um, I looked at this a little greater and the regular red on, in your analysis is actually gone up more than double. I was using a ridiculous 33% number last time overall. And if I'm reading the report here correctly, in the current year we spent $1 million in FY 2019 and the projected cost is next year is 2.6 million, which is 1.6 million difference. Am I reading that wrong? I think you're reading it right. So at, at the last meeting, before we had gotten some of this analysis, I was thinking that that particular item was close, closer in price, and I thought the special education bid was different, but that's ridiculous. And uh, I really don't... Uh, I don't really have any questions, but I'm prepared to make a motion to get rid of the bids and move on. So I yield. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. <clears throat> any further questions for Mr. Pacheco? Are there any questions for Mr. Labrie? Can I follow up with that? Sure. From Mr. Um, Labrie or with the, uh, Mr. Pacheco? Mr. Pacheco. So right. on, on, on uh, question number five, Ken, on, uh, on, you know, on your questions. Yes. Um, there's a chart that says a total of 10, 8, Ten million eight. So, um, that, so that's the purchase of, of buses. So that chart was put together if we were to, to uh, purchase our buses and contract the operation of the buses out. So this would be the cost per bus to do the um, purchase. Would that be our own fleet? That would be our own fleet. But our we would own. not. We would own it, but not operate it. We so would this own, proposal would, would be own to it. own right to own the equipment. So basically, it's, it's the SRTA model, the Regional Transit Authority model. Okay. The Regional Tran Transit Authority owns the equipment. They own the mechanics. They own the dispatch. But the remainder of the operation is done by a private contractor. So the drivers, the drivers, monitors, monitors, the maintenance. The maintenance is done by, would be done by the city. Would be done by us. Yes. Has, have there been studies about efficiency as far as that model versus the model we're using now? The, the only thing I'd, I'd say to that is, is there are communities now who are flipping back. So city of New Bedford for years provided their own transportation. Now they're private. 
Now they're using a private contractor to do everything. They got rid of all their buses. So I don't know in, in, if it's community to community. I, I, I didn't see any trend. It just seemed that New Bedford, you know, had whether it was a bus issue, uh, buying new buses, another investment that they didn't want to make or not, I don't know. All I know is that the, the, their contract number currently, their new contract that was just bid out and won by a local company was $11 million. The reason I'm asking you these questions is because I know how hard you're working at putting this whole plan together, okay? Um, I'm a little bit alarmed at the cost of transportation overall. And I know that there are logistics in play here in our district, so we're dealing with that. But still, the trajectory of these costs are just, I, I just, I'm looking at that and it's, it's very concerning. So I, I, my last question is, have you been thinking about or, or playing around with the idea of our own fleet or, 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 or as such, something like that? I, I haven't personally no. went down that road. Um, it's a major investment up front, and um, again, we would assume the, the liability, so the insurance on those buses, we would own that piece. Um, and as, as far as the operation of it, if you're going to do it, I would think that you would want a private company, an experienced transportation company, doing the day-to-day -day work. You know, the, the drivers, owning the drivers, owning the uh, monitors, and also owning that liability and that pension liability or sure. you know, all of the costs that come with that ca human capital. Um, as far as the equipment, the equipment is the equipment. You know, obviously, it's going to be as good as we take care of it. And um, with a bus fleet, <coughs> um, it's going to be a lot of uh, PM work and um, probably multi-shifts of employees. We would need a facility, you know, a terminal. Um, that we would be able to work in, a place to house those buses. Is it, can, it, can it be looked at as a job creator? It could be. It could be, and, and I'm guessing that, uh, again, you're going to take away a chunk of buses. So if we were to do it in piecemeal, for instance, if we were to take one section of the contract that we don't like right now, um, and we would have just privatized that one piece. So basically bring the buses in-house and privatize the, the work to the way it is right now. Um, I would think that that would be the approach rather than try and bite off the entire transportation piece, which would be very difficult to do. Yes. And again, getting buses, we're in, we're in April, getting buses delivered and ready for service in, in uh, September, that's a tall feat. Thank you. With that, I yield. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Thanks, Ken. Yeah. Mr. Coogan. Are we going to approve this tonight, Ken? Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. I, I think that last meeting we put a placeholder in uh, for the budget. The number we approved last time? Okay. Um, but I'm not sure if, if this is going to go to the city for recommendation. It's a five-year contract, so this body would recommend it to the city, and then the city would, would send it to council um, for a five-year approval. All right, so, but, but if we did use the placeholder method and go, go with this tonight, is, is there additional cuts coming that we had talked about earlier that we you, would, you foresee in this increase that everybody We would make every on? effort to make sure that there are cuts. Okay. There, there are, the conversations have been had. Um, I have not yet sat down with the bus companies formally to talk to them about any cuts. However, internally we've you know, looked at what we have and we feel that there's uh, savings to be had in all mm -hmm. of the contracts. In, the reg in both regular and special ed? Regular, special ed, and the vans that we've already approved, yes. Okay, thanks, Yield. Thank you, Mr. Coogan. Mr. Hetzel? One more question, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, is there an opportunity to negotiate out any of the items on those contracts? Yes. Um, we, right. we can negotiate even the 30B side, so the, the special ed side, which is <coughs> the special ed transportation, is, is not a 30B item, even though we bid it that way. It's a, it's a, a non-bid item. So we would negotiate with that operator. Um, the, rest of the, the rest of the contracts are 30B, but we still have the right to negotiate only with the, um, with the low bidder. So whoever we're going to award the bid to, we could negotiate, right. we could out negotiate some out. of the specs, like instead of four cameras yes. or whatnot, we could have two. Or Absolutely. Not that I want less cameras, but as a, an example. Right. Okay, thank you. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Hetzel. Mr. Pacheco. Is it the district's intention to continue to work 
with the individuals that bid yes. for the yellow buses only? So well we, we can only we can only we can only speak to those who have other low bidders. Okay. And if there is no negotiations, then the only option we have on the thirty B side is to reject throw the out the bids, reject the award. Right. On the special ed side, it would be the same situation. So we would negotiate with the low bidder. If we chose not to pick the low bidder, mm -hmm. then we would again throw out the bids. But on the special ed side, we could negotiate now with everyone right. because it's not a, a 30B situation. So I'm, I'm, I guess what I'm trying to accomplish this evening for this committee is what our options are. So our options tonight are to award the bid. Yes. To um, not take any action to award the bid and allow you and the administration to continue to speak with the low bidder regarding their bid or three to take a vote to throw out the bids entirely and rebid. Yes. So essentially the committee this evening has got three, three options choices. before them. Make a motion we throw out both bids. There's a motion made by Mr. Aguiar to throw out or to reject um, the bids as proposed. It's all, it's all three, right? Okay. All three what? Just three bids. Right. Yes. Right. right. Which would encompass the regular ed, the Special homeless, ed. And, yep. and also the uh, um, sports. Sports. We've yes. already approved and awarded the contract the vans, for special the vans ed. Approved and uh, yes. For vans, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So, Mr. Aguilar, just for clarification, you, your motion this evening is to reject the three bids as proposed. Is there a second to that motion? The motion doesn't garner a second. Is there any further discussion this evening regarding the FY20 for public schools transportation? Any yes. Mr. Aguilar? So I'm not really sure why that wouldn't be seconded by anybody else on the stage, but the facts as they've been presented to us indicate that we have bids that we cannot afford to pay. I don't understand what the dilemma is here. The best option for us is to go back out as my colleague to my left, my colleague to my right said, we gotta, get we gotta get rid of some of the stuff that you added in here that was increasing the cost of these to the best of our ability. We also, to be transparent and fair to bidders, if we knew that we we're gonna get rid of 10 buses, we need to have that information in the bid. So we actually put bids out saying we needed X number of buses. People either chose to bid or not bid based on that fact and then when they come out now and it's too high, well, we're gonna cut 10 buses. We even have information from Mr. Pacheco in here from companies that said, if you can't articulate to us how many buses you were gonna reduce because the language was too vague, we will not bid. That same company or one of those same companies is the same folks that Mr. Labrie kept coming to us month after month saying they're gonna bid on, a, on a, the buses. We really have no choice here, in my mind, but to get rid of these bids now, it's April 9th, April 8th. So we can get the administration to go back, clean up these bids the way that they should have been in the first place, get the routing software that we asked them to do over a year ago that's still not in. There's really no excuse for that, but I'm not even going into that. But we need to get this done. At that same time, we can do what we've done in this district over the past. In the special education bids, you can go back to the vendors, as Mr. Pacheco said, only if we reject these bids tonight, and talk to any of those people that currently have contracts to transport the same number of children that we're transporting in the current year. It's unbelievable to me that we're gonna just keep going on and on here to say, well, let's go and wait and negotiate. I just asked Mr. Pacheco when the next meeting is, it's in May. So if by chance we couldn't so-called negotiate down, guess what? We're gonna be trying to get a special meeting in a rush to try and get these bids done so we can get the kids transported. It, to me, it's, it's, it's just there's no other decision that we have other than the fact to get rid of these three bids. So if you wanna keep going like this, let's just approve 11.9 million, let's throw it on the city and tell them they're gonna pay whether it's one or two or three million dollars more. Let's see how that goes. That's our, our options here as, school, as a school committee. Let's throw a couple million dollar increase on the city or just throw the bids out and let's do it the best way that we possibly know based on the information that we have that was presented here. The, the vans that Mr. Pacheco talks about that we already approved, that was, a, I think it was a 3.5% increase, something very small. 
So naturally, the committee in its infinite wisdom said, yeah, let's go with that because it made sense what Mr. Pacheco and Mr. Libri did. We, it made sense, so let's just go with that. That's what we, when it's common sense. The common sense piece here tonight, I asked my colleagues to reconsider their vote, that this, the common sense thing to do is throw the bids out and let's get move on with the bids as I talked about because to me it's a no-brainer. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. <coughs> Thank you. So my understanding is we would have to have a special meeting regardless to approve if we don't approve them tonight. Is that correct? Because 60 days is going to be up before the next meeting. So we have to take action tonight or we have to have a special meeting. Does that sound about right to everyone? Mr. Pacheco? Yeah, we would, we would 60 days to approve the contracts. Okay. So yes. I'm not happy that the software wasn't in, the transportation software. I've been asking for it for a while, right? If, it is if what I it could, is. Mr. Hetzler. On that, on that particular piece, that's my fault. Okay. Th that software wasn't put in place um, for a <coughs> variety of reasons, all of which lie with me. Okay, thank you very much for that answer. Yeah. Um, so I'm not happy that that didn't take place because that would have helped us with a couple of the bidders. But the information that is being provided is showing me that, you know, we're in line with the other districts. It's not that far out of whack. So I think we'll be, the only thing we can do tonight is approve it and hope that Mr. Pacheco, once the software gets installed and people work on it, can figure out a way to reduce costs. And then hopefully, if we, I have a question, I guess, for Mr. Pacheco, if we approve these bids, can we still negotiate after we approve it? Yes. So there's still the option to save some more money there, somehow, some way. So with that being said, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the bids tonight. So that's what's made a motion that we approve the, the three bids as proposed? Yes. The three bids as proposed this evening. Is there a second? I, uh, I'll second, but I got a couple questions. I, sure. He made Mr. The, Coogan seconds it with a question. Mr. Coogan, floor is yours. Um, that increase in the regular end um, shown on the paper you gave us, Kenny, I think it's number six of 1.6 million. Isn't that according to what you told us last time with the 10 buses already reduced by $700,000? No, that, that's not in here. So the 11, the, the 11, the money that we are putting into the budget, the placeholder, the 11.9, does not include any cuts. That's all inclusive. That's transportation costs in-house. That's um, the SRTA costs. All of that's included, okay. inclu including the software. But the 11.9, we were told, can't that be reduced by that 700000 back to eleven two? Well, that is the proposal. Right? Okay. And then the additional cuts, if it's for equipment or anything that Mr. Hetzler was referring to, whether we go and will, will the companies that are going to, as my colleague on the right said, get those bids, are they still prepared to work with us to sharpen their pencils on these bids? Or I don't think sense? that anyone's going to, I don't think that anyone is going to choose not to negotiate with us as opposed to going to an, another bid process. I don't know. I, I, my guess is if I was sitting in their shoes, I would want to negotiate. Negotiate but down. Negotiate <laughs> down, right. Okay. Exactly. <laughs> negotiate down. Uh, yield. Thank you, Mr. Coogan. Any further discussion on a motion that's on the table? Mr. Aguiar? What's the purpose of having specs for a bid? To get the best possible price. But what, what does the specification mean? What is that? The written document is a spec. And it articulates what? The desires of the district. How many buses, how, whatever's in the specification. Exactly. So Using numbers we already have. So we're using yeah. historical data to come up with the specs. Yep. Yes. And, I, and I'm not being overly critical of you, Mr. Pacheco. You I do know. a nice job. So it's just a matter of you're here taking the heat, and I appreciate you being forthcoming about it. But if we all put ourselves in the position of a bus vendor or a contract person that's building anything, and we have a specification that goes out. How mad would you be if that specification went out calling for 40 buses that have to be five years old, that you need this and that and all this other stuff? How mad would anybody watching or here on this stage be if lo and behold, I didn't bid because I only had 35 of those buses or 30 of those buses, I couldn't afford that extra fee. The other person gets the bid, and then we are sitting here talking about negotiating down prices. I get what you're trying to do. You need to try and lower it. I 
appreciate that part of it. But for the people taking this vote, I just want people to be aware of what you're voting on. You're voting on something that isn't really transparent to the people that actually either chose to bid or chose not to bid. And I, quite frankly, don't think that's fair. If the bids came in close, we would have just awarded them, as I said, with the bus, with the vans. But it's just truly not the right thing to do, to take a bid, go out and say we're going to build something, we're going to buy something, and then, oh, by the way, let me negotiate with this one vendor who happened to be the, if that's the case, hell, I just, you know, underbid and negotiate. You know, they can work the system a little bit too much is quite honestly the way that I'm seeing it. I appreciate what you're thinking. You're thinking is to negotiate a lower or better price for our busing to get this price down. I understand that. And I'll just reiterate to my colleagues once again, the best way to do that, especially in the side for the special education busing, which is non-30B, which is twice or three times as much as the regular ed, you can negotiate with the vendors that we currently have transporting our kids. We can negotiate with companies that have been in this district for years, that have worked with us, that are local people, that are, I, I just don't get the idea of why we would just walk away from that when we still have the opportunity you know, to, to actually do that and make a difference in that. Um, I would like to say though, before we do take a vote, I was very critical of Mr. Libri in the, at the last meeting and I would like to, before we make any decisions, have Mr. Libri come up to at least give him a chance to talk and explain what you, your feelings are, sir, and maybe you can try and sway some people's opinions. Uh, not sure I'm doing a good job of that, but thank you. Mr. Libri. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Is, is there a question? Question. What do you think of the bids that came in 33% higher than that? The, uh, if you look at the cost per day per bus compared to other school districts that are like Fall River, uh, you'll see that the uh, cost per day per bus was very reasonable. The issue is not what you're paying per bus. The issue is the fact of how many buses you're using, which has the budget impact. So, so the key to reducing the budget is not necessarily based on reducing the cost for the buses, which we're, uh, Mr. Pacheco is attempting to do, but also to reduce the number of buses that you're using. That will have the largest impact. And do you think that that's, so you just think that we should just approve the 11-9 and call it a day as a consultant? On March 11th, uh, I submitted a recommendation to award the three sections of the bid. So it is that does not preclude Mr. Pacheco and the administration, myself if invited, to work with the low bidders to continue to reduce, attempt to reduce the cost and the budget impact. So you, you've been around for the, over a year, right? I've been here almost three years. Three years, so along the way, when you talk about the biggest impact of a bid is the number of buses, <coughs> right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So you sat before us in subcommittee meetings and full meetings saying uh, that you think it's actually going to be a cost savings to the district. Is that accurate? I anticipated that and I, w I was hopeful that that would be the case. Yeah. And you don't, and you're not concerned that that's woefully not the case, like it's not even close. So you came before us as a consultant. And I respect you as a worker that came here and you gave us, I think, the honest opinion that you could at the time. But when the bids come back and they're that far over what you anticipated, plus what you told not only the school committee, you told the mayor of the city who was on the city side who's going to actually have to pay this bill, you told him right here at a meeting that we're going to look to save, I want to say it was even a half a million or a million dollars, <coughs> hopefully. <coughs> we didn't guarantee it. I'm, you know, that's a fact, right? That's correct. Yeah. And I just don't see how you can come before us and just say we'll pay it and not come up with any other better solution. I have no control over what the bidders bid. So you wrote the specs, right? You put the language in for the specs. Yes. Did any of those, the wording in any of those uh, items have an effect on people either not bidding or how much they bid? Not that I'm aware of. Not that you're aware of. So, we look at the, uh, wherever I read it in here about first student, mm -hmm. 
Didn't they make a comment in here that they couldn't bid with uh, recognizing that the district would most likely be reducing the number of buses required over the cost of the term? We could not bid unless the district were to guarantee us our profit and overhead for each bus eliminated. That's what we were told today. That's correct. In this document. That's what I was told. And you don't think that this, that the wording that's in the contract that says we have a right to reduce the bus, whatever the terminology was, you don't think that's a, that was a factor in whether they bid or not, but that's what we got here in front of us? They could have bid. They, cho they chose not to. The question I asked you, though, sir, was did anything that was in the spec have an effect on whether people bid or not? Not that I'm aware of. And you agree that that's what they told you? That's what they told me. They wanted to be guaranteed 31.84% of their cost per day per bus for every bus that we cut for every bus that did not run. Right, because there's language in the contract that says we can reduce whatever we want. No, the language in the contract that says we could add or subtract up to 25% of the, the number of buses according to the IG's regulation. Right, so 25% of the buses. So you, so Plus or minus 25%. I don't think I'm going to get anywhere with the discussions with you over this. I'll just say, quite frankly, and I'm quite disappointed as one member of this committee that you have been around for three years, you've been recommending things to us with transportation, and the end result of that is, is that we're going to pay three and a half million dollars more, or whatever the amount of money is more, and you just don't seem to want to help us with that. You just want to say, well, just pay it, because that's just the way it is. Well, when we don't have the money to pay it, or the city doesn't have the money to pay it. It's gonna come out of the kids. It's gonna come out of the teachers. It's gonna come out of the classrooms at the end of the day. So I won't belabor the point. I think you know how I feel about the situation. I'm just very disappointed in how it proceeded. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Any further discussion on the motion? Roll call. Mr. Aguiar? No. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hutzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? No. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. Motion passes 3 2. Second edge of the item is a second read and vote to approve the 2019 20 school year instructional calendar presented by Dr. Julia Carlson. Is there a motion? Mo motion to approve. Made by Mr. Coogan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hetzler. Any discussion on a second read? No? Hearing none? All in favor? Aye. All opposed? So voted. Third agenda item is a discussion vote to approve the Youth Risk Behavior Survey as presented by Dr. Ann Doggin, Executive Director of Special motion Ed. To approve. Is there a motion to approve? Yes. Made by Mr. Corey. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Hetzler. Any discussion on the motion? Yes. If we can ask um, Dr. Doggin. Hold yes. on. I'm sorry, Mr. Corey. We'll just give a moment to Dr. Doggin to. Good evening, Good. Dr. Doggin. Good evening. So I just wanted to know who will administer the survey? The uh, Youth Risk uh, Empowerment Task Force. Yes. So. Um, it's not uh, DESI. Uh, DESI does identify a number of participants on an every other year, of which some of our students and schools have been identified. But our feeling through this Youth Empowerment Task Force, we have uh, the uh, vocational school, we have the Diocese of Fall River, we have the Atlantic Charter School, and we're hoping that the Fall River uh, School Committee will give permission this evening. I understand that the last time this was administered, um, our uh, district-wide was 2015, and the only reason that it was stopped uh, as a school district was through um, uh, lack of funding. So it would be administered uh, through the Youth Empowerment Task Force citywide. Back in 2013, I, was, I uh, helped to administer this survey, and uh, one of the benefits of the survey that I realized at that time was the debrief. Uh, only because we had we had the group already in place. So I mean, it went out school system wide, but I was able to debrief with our group at Durfee High School. 
and there were some amazing results in the debrief. Might there be any debriefing sessions scheduled after the survey is, is given out? Absolutely. Um, the uh, Youth Empowerment Task Force is committed to that. This is a task force uh, that was uh, initiated uh, this past winter, and the momentum is building, continuous, to address the social-emotional needs of our youngsters. Uh, we were recently, uh, as late as last week, awarded a $110,000 grant from the Department of Elementary and Secondary Ed, of which you'll hear more about at some point in time and accept that grant, but we now have been able to secure some funding to be able to allow things like that to happen. Thank you. With that, I yield. appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Any further discussion? What, what was the presentation? Mm. It was a discussion and a vote to approve. The youth no presentation. No, I know. It just says, as presented. I was waiting for Dr. Doggin to present something. That's all. But it just says, as presented. That's so way, I was, that's the way we write before it. Before we on, jump the gun and that's the way we write it on all of our uh, agendas, Kevin. The, uh, when it says at the front, presentation, that's a presentation, but the item's presented by a member of the executive team. That's what I mean. Presented by, so they didn't answer questions. They're not doing a presentation. Okay, so I, I would just, I mean, I know what this is, and I just thought you were on here to come up and present something, so I'm not opposed to it. It's just, I thought you should be heard, that's all. Thank you. So there was discussion, there's a motion on the table to vote to approve. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa? Thank you, Thank you very much. Item number four. Thank you, Dr. Doggin. Item number four, discussion and vote to approve the job description for instructional support liaison as presented by Tom Coogan, Executive Director of Human Resources. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Made by Mr. Aguirre. Is there a second? Second with a question. Second by Mr. Hetzler. Discussion. Mr. Hetzler. Yes, thank you. Um, the word liaison in the title, do we like liaison? Um, it's a specialist work? I mean, I'm not sure. Um, I think the, the design of the word liaison uh, in this particular case just means somebody who goes between the teacher and the students. So. The design of this uh, position is for this person to implement targeted strategies and interventions that the teacher has either collaborated with this individual on or sent them out to do. So this person is going to provide uh, direct services to students and targeted interventions um, at a little bit more of a, an academic level than the traditional paraprofessional role. Okay, that, yeah, that was my only question, just the wording, liaison. I just as a go, as a go between, if you will. Thank you. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Hetzler. Any further discussion, Mr. Corey? Yeah, I, I like the job description a lot, Mr. Coogan. I think it's a step forward. It shows uh, shows kind of like a new sense of direction that will take. It's almost like an incubator. You know, you can build people into the profession, and uh, they sort of get mentored and. And then they, they impart their wisdom. I think it's a really good thing. One question on the job, on the performance responsibilities, on uh, items number seven and eight, on the second page under re performance responsibilities. Yes. I just thought that maybe in the description, it may you may want to have a little more narrow definition to uh, items seven and eight. Any other additional duties is assigned, including class coverages or any other additional responsibilities or duties as assigned by the building administrator. I think um, uh, we, we, don't, we want to respect the job description and not try to wear these people out too thinly. So that would be my only question on the job description. Outside of that, I love the idea of where this is going. Thank you, with that I yield. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Any further discussion on a motion? Just have a quick question. This job description doesn't conflict with any other job we currently have within the school district? Not currently. It does incorporate some elements of both the paraprofessional and some elements of the teaching profession, but it's not designed to be anything other than a transition right now uh, while we pilot this program. Okay. Thank you. Hearing no further discussion, roll call, please. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correct. 
Item number five is a discussion and vote to approve the food services bid process, CEP, as referred by the Facilities and Operations Subcommittee, presented by Mr. Ken Pacheco, Chief Operating Officer. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Made by Mr. Coogan. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Corey. Discussion on a motion? Hearing no discussion, roll call. Mr. Agnew? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa? Mr. Chairman, Chairman I yes. apologize. I might have just missed something. Was this the uh, contract or the CEP? It was a discussion and vote the, the, on the uh, food service bid process. We have another, the other presentation coming up later? Which one? The, uh, About the free lunch thing and all that? That was together. Was that was the CEP. CEP and, that was and it. RFI, an RFP. So we did two at once? So we're going to out for contract for the RFP for the food service. This was to uh, vote to allow us to go into the CEP. Right, that's what I mean. I, can I ask a question on that? Sure. So just for the edification of the public as well as all of us here, in the past we never, we didn't go for this because financially it wasn't, it was going to cost us money and when I reviewed the analysis that Mr. Almeida and yourself presented, it seemed like it was very marginal, if anything, but we would be able to service more students. It, it will service more students. Um, also, um, not included in some of these numbers, there's some um, foster care, there's some um, um, homeless population, so we're identifying that. We're hoping to get that percentage up, you know, uh, a few more percentage points. So right now, 8% would be ineligible for full reimbursement, and the remaining 91% um, would be eligible right. for full reimbursement. Maybe if I could just ask you to give like a one, two sentence, three sentences quick for the public. People at home don't necessarily know what we're voting on, but this sure. will make sense. So the, the, uh, the CEP is, is a program which will um, pre-certify most of our students um, for free lunch. Um, so there would only be two categories, free and reduced. Um, there would be no full pay uh, on, the, on, the, um, on the list. We think that we're only a few percentage, we know we're only a few percentage points away, uh, roughly five percentage points, six percentage points away from being a district that is fully uh, certified for free lunch for all students. Um, we need to work at that and, and um, basically uh, tease out the information out of um, um, X2 to get us to that, to that point where we are. Um, three quarters of our schools are eligible for free or reduced lunch. Um, so we're also looking into a partial um, implementation. So what we're, we're doing here is we're close to full implementation. Um, we think we're gonna hit that mark. Um, but these numbers here will get us to where we are today. Um, so, right. but, but it is a work in progress. We are going to continue working on no, this. No, I think it's good, and you analyzed it in the past, told us it wasn't worth it, and now you're telling us it's worth it, so there's exactly. no problem supporting it. Thank you for the yeah. input. Thank you, Mr. Agia. Yeah. Agenda item number six is a discussion and vote to approve the proposed fiscal year 2020 <laughs> annual operating budget for the four of our public schools, as presented by Dr. Matthew Malone, Superintendent of Schools. Dr. Malone? Yes. So. Tonight is the night where the committee uh, votes to approve a number, a number which is a placesetter that gets sent uh, to the mayor and to the city council. That number uh, is based on a recommendation uh, that I've provided to the committee uh, over two months ago, or three months ago, once when we, when we began our budgetary process. As we know, uh, the House won, the governor's budget came out uh, in February, or January, January, and at that time we developed our budget and we came forward being up front uh, that I was going to bring forward a budget at 101 uh, percent of that figure, knowing that that figure changes. Wednesday, the House will release their budget. There'll be amendments made on, on the, by Friday. The Senate will then do their budget, and then conference committee will come to a final budget uh, at some point in May or June uh, for full approval. At that time, we will know exactly what our number is. Between now and then, what needs to happen is we need to work with our colleagues in the city council and, and the mayor's office and the finance team to come with a number that will make sense for the Fall River Public Schools. The budget proposal that I've put forward to you originally 
contains uh, what we feel strongly about is uh, a host of investments uh, that will continue to meet uh, or to continue to grow uh, our student achievement levels, support our teachers in, the, uh, in schools, and invest in our classroom facilities. We feel strongly that this budget proposal uh, is in the best interest of students, but also in the best interest of the future uh, of our school system. So having said that to you tonight, again, I want to be very clear, you're not voting the budget tonight. You're not voting the line items. There will be plenty of time for that as this process continues. Tonight you're voting a place setter so we can send a number to City Hall uh, and then begin that process, which begins actually this week uh, with the joint meeting. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. I'll make the motion. Made by Mr. Hetzler. Seconded. Seconded. Just for the record, the request from the administration this evening is $100. Six million six hundred forty-two thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars. I could just have that reflected if, if the maker of the motion would include that as part of their motion, so that we have the exact number. I'd like to make a motion that we approve the uh, annual budget of one hundred six million six hundred forty-two thousand six hundred forty-eight dollars, and send that to the city council. There was a motion made by Mr. Hetzler. Is there a second, Mr. Corey? Any discussion on that motion, Mr. Aguiar? So in light of the other vote where we, I would like to say, kind of stuck the city with a $2 million bill, but doing the right thing for the schools is to be honest about what these numbers are and what they're not. So we here in the city over the last several years have heard 101% in net school spending across the board from this school committee, from the city council to the administration. Everyone says the same thing. We need, as a city, to fund our schools at 101% of net school spending. And I would agree with that. But what happens is it's the beginning of April, and we pass a budget that we all sit here and say it's 101% of net school spending. And then the year goes on, and the budget gets actually approved by the House, the Senate, and the Governor. And lo and behold, what we were all told is 101% of net school spending comes out at 100% of net school spending, several years in a row. So what we do is sit here at the school and we say we need more resources for the kids, we need more resources for the classroom, the kids are needier than ever, we have all these challenges, we need 101% of net school spending. So we approve a budget today, like we did last year, that said, so we can leave here at night and say, we spent 101% of net school spending. We pound our chest and we say how great that was. But we forget to come back and say, but in reality it's only 100%, so let's just call it a day after that. And I think that we should, as a committee, before we take this vote, <coughs> do a little bit of analysis like I've done and look at what is the actual figure that Dr. Malone is putting forth is 101% of the governor's number. He's been transparent about that. It's 101% of the governor's number. Now, anybody that's ever been in government or talked to our state house legislators on both sides of the aisle knows the governor's numbers are usually dead on arrival. The House of Representatives numbers usually go up. The Senate number usually goes up from there, just like happened last year. And we're gonna say, this is what we think we should pass for a budget. I don't think so, I think we should add to it. And the reason why I say that is, if we could predict in June what 100% of net school spending is, it's probably gonna be something very similar to what Dr. Malone has presented here as the 100% number. So when we, when we look at it and say, if we wanna be at 101% as a community, as all three legislative bodies, if we wanna be at 101%, then I think we need to add a 1% to this number, to truly be at 101% when we pass a budget. So we can actually say, if we're gonna be at 101%, this is what the number should be. If the administration chooses to cut it, or the city council chooses to cut it, they can do that. But what ends up happening is we, I think, shortchange the school department budget in a lot of ways, and this is a different year, 
I grant you that. The Foundation Budget Review Commission, all the hard work that the unions are doing, the superintendent and all, everybody's doing to try and, and get more money to cities like ours. We're gonna get more money. And the reason why we're getting more money is because we need more money to service the kids that we have in this district. So if I can ask Mr. Almeida just to come to the podium quick. So if we take the 106 number that we, is on the table right now, what would 1% additional money be? So that we could be at 101% of real numbers, real projected numbers. 1.5 million, according to your member? Right. Of the 160. Oh, of the operating? If you, if you use the 106, 642, 648, um, it's 1%. It's one point, it's, it'll be 1. roughly 7. one, a little over 1.6 million. 1.6. No, a little over 100 million. Yeah. One, no. one million. One million. Means. million. Over, uh, 60, over one point, over 1.6 million, 1. 6, 6 million right. more. Right. Not 1.6. Because Mr. O'Meara, you use the, for the net school spending is the 160, right? 160, yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. So Correct. it's on the, the high number right. of the 160. Yeah. All right. So 1.6. Yep. So the other piece of that, thank you, Mr. Almeida. The other piece that I think we should all consider, and I mentioned this at one of the prior meetings, is that we should be at a transparent 100% of the final number that the House and Senate and the governor put forth. And there's another thing called the Medicaid reimbursement, which in our indirect cost agreement says we'll get any 50% over two million. We're never gonna get two million probably. So. I'd like to have that renegotiated at one of the future meetings to put on the agenda. But that is money that comes into the school department that we spend out, the city gets the money, and none comes to us presently. And it doesn't get counted in the calculations for net school spending or anything. So I think that there's you know, money to be had if people wanna have 101% commitment to schools. I do believe that we should do that. So I'd like to amend the motion to add $1.6 million which is 101% of the f what we project to be the final state budget. I'll second it. So there was a motion to add 1.6 million to which number? The 160, whatever the top number is. So can my maker of the motion give me the exact total? Well, either one. I guess it could be either one, right? Uh, if you think of it, 1.6 is... Who would be talking about? No. So the net school spending, may I? No. Absolutely. I, I need a, a number so that we can discuss it. Yeah, he's going to give it to us. So it's 160 plus 1.6. It's not 1.6. All right. So can I have the number? either Mr. Superintendent or the maker of the motion, could you give me the exact number that you're asking this committee to take action on? Mr. Almeida, could you come to the podium, please? I have a lot of papers here, but you probably sure. have it clearer. So my, so my only question to you is, is the, is the if, I, if I can, is, is the 1% on the 106 or is the 1% on the 160? How is net school spending calculated? Well, because my, my, I only asked that question because the number that goes down to the mayor and the number that goes down to the city council is the 106. So if it's, if it's 1.6 of the total, that's fine, but I got to add that to the 106, not the 160. So, so that, that would be the number. So I think so. in reviewing the data, the information that you presented, I just can't happen to find it at the present moment. There was a, a sentence in there relative to what the 101 percent is calculated on net school spending and i believe it was the 160 and change it is it, it, and, that, so, and that is the way that it is but and then we get the one six my motion would be to add that and then you would have to subtract off the indirects to get the actual other number correct correct so that's the number that the chairman is looking so, for can I the number? 160 so, and change plus 1.6 so million i guess i added a million six to the to the 106 million so it's 108 242 648 that's 1.6 million and that represents pretty close. 101 percent of what number? Of the 160. The 106. Of the 160. So 108. I just it wasn't writing it. 
For, for the operating budget, it would be 108, 242, 648. It's 1.6 no, million on, dollars hold more. Hold on, please. 108 million, 242,648 dollars is 101 percent of what number? Because yeah. we've already been told that 101 percent of, of the governor's number is 106, 642, 648. So that's above. Right. And the you can't have, it one. can't be 101 if 101 is 106, which was already proposed. Mr. Chairman? Can I clarify? So the 101 that's presented by the superintendent was based on the House governor's number, House 1, which Correct. is the governor's number. What my motion and the amendment is, is to get the actual to be 101 percent of the projected final budget that's approved by the House, the Senate, and the uh, right. conference committee. But we don't know that number. No. But right. It's the best so you guess want it to be 101 percent of a number that we don't have. That we don't know. Well, we got we to send a number. We have to correct. vote to approve an operating budget this evening to send to the council. We absolutely do. So what number would you propose? 108, 242, 648. And the reason why I did that is what I just said earlier. So last year, we as a committee said, we're going to vote for a number that's 101% of net school spending. And as I said, everybody got excited and said we, we fund education at 101%. And we walked out the door. Two months later, we funded education at 100% or even less than 100% as a city. I'm trying not to make that same mistake again. Right. So the reason why I'm doing that is with the knowledge and the experience that we have at the podium, at the superintendent level, in the state house. I've spoken to several legislators. I know how that budget works. The House is going to come in higher. The Senate is going to come in higher. And we're going to be sitting here saying, well, we thought it was 101, but it's really 100. But we need more resources for our kids. Right. So what I'll say is that at this point, Mr. Aguiar, a couple of things. 106,642,648 represents 101% of the governor's number. Yes. We already heard through budget presentations by the superintendent, by Mr. Almeida, and at finance that that meets our needs already and exceeds that. That includes 65 additional positions in our budget currently. So when we talk about we pound our chest, 101, we didn't meet it. There's a number of factors that weigh into that. Did we budget 101? Yes. Due to health care, obviously not coming in as projected, it causes the number to go from 101% closer to 100%. Right. That's just reality. So we're projecting we're going to spend 101. The reality is, Mr. Aguiar said, is that it, it didn't come to fruition. But that wasn't the intent. The intent was to fund us at 101. If our health care had come true as we anticipated and budgeted, we would have spent closer to 101. But health care is not, this, not this, an issue. This, really. this past health year, is not an issue. This past year, the Senate, the Senate provided 1.4 million right. more than the governor this past Correct. year. But what I'm saying is 106,642,648 that's proposed is 101% of a number we know. Yes. If it goes yes. up, obviously there's an obligation by the administration, the city finance team, to, to fund us at at least 100%. So if we're in agreement that that number is going to go up, and we already are meeting the needs of the district where we are now, we'll certainly be able to do it if the number goes up. We just may not be at 101 percent, but even Correct. if it's 100 percent, it's still going to be Correct. more money than you already have agreed that we can do what we need to next year financially, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, you know, I'll just say this, and, and you know, I appreciate Mr. Aguiar trying to get more money. I just think to say, well, we want to put a, a certain percentage on the number we already know and send that number down when we don't know what the final number is going to be, I think it's premature for that. I, th I think we'll have opportunity as the, if the committee wants to take a vote tonight to fund us at no less than 101, that's an option. But uh, the reality is the city's held by law to fund us at 100 percent. And so we can all say, you know, for conversation purposes, we want it to be 101 percent. But the reality is the city has to fund us at 100 percent, whatever that's going to be. And I agree. I'm talking with our local delegation, it's more likely than not the number is going to increase. But if you're telling me tonight that we can accomplish what we need to in FY20 with 106 $106,642,648, then I'm confident that that's a number that we can send down. And obviously, if it increases after it goes through the budget cycle at the state, the reality, the, the problem is that we're, we're hamstrung here. 
we're creating a budget in April when we are so reliant on state aid that we don't know what the Chapter 70's allotment's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so as a result yeah. of that, we're flying blind, if you will, trying to pick 101% of the governor's number when ultimately we know that may change. If we were putting this together in June, we'd have a better sense. But the reality is the city charter says they want the budget done sooner rather than later. And so we're trying to accomplish that. And I don't think it's a fair process because we still don't know what the funding is going to look like from the state. But So the motion on the table is $108,242,648. Is that seconded? It was Sorry. by Mr. Hetzler. It was seconded by Mr. Hetzler. Further discussion, Mr. Aguiar? Yeah, so uh, if I look to preview the uh, special meeting we have on Thursday, we just received information relative to some slides and uh, one in budget assumptions from the city says school department is requesting an appropriation at 101% of net school spending. So I think we're being very transparent in the fact of if we're gonna say 101, which is included in this here document that they gave to us, and we know that the number that the superintendent put right now, because that's only what is absolutely 100% known, is what the house, the governor's number is, if we think that that's going to be the end, we, we're making the same mistake we made last year. We, the reason why I'm trying to put the 101 is when you're doing a budget and a projection on April 8th for the end of a state budget, you have to do the best guess you possibly can. And talking to Mr. Almeida, superintendent, several state legislators, I've asked that same exact question. Do you think that we're going to be higher than the governor's number or below? And to a person, it's we're going to be higher because of the work being done on the review commission and the other things that are happening. And we have a lot of ELL students, low income students, all of those things, we call it like check the boxes. We have all of those and we're gonna get more revenue. So the only thing I'm advocating for is for the uh, extra 1% is because I think that's where we're gonna be with the best possible guess. Now if the city and the, uh, and the council can't approve it, then that's something they can't approve. But when you look at, and I wanna thank the superintendent for some of this, when we look at, uh, in the past year, about net school spending and who's where, we're at 0% because we were at 100. The only two communities are New Bedford and Springfield that were below. And guess what? Everybody else is above to the tune of 3.9 in Attleboro, 8.3 in Everett. We just keep going on and on and on. And the average statewide is 25.2% over net school spending, over the required minimum. So if we think, if you think that we don't need to be up higher, I would say vote against this. If you think that we need the revenue that we need, I would say vote for it. And I ask my colleagues for their support. Mr. Chairman. If I could just, to Mr. Aguiar's point, Mr. Aguiar, there's also a slide in there that 101% is from the FY20 in your packet that you referenced, 101. If you go to a couple of pages prior to that, you'll see the breakdown. It says FY20 governor's budget. So that 101 that's in that slide is reflective of the 101 percent of the governor's mm -hmm. budget, which is 106 million 600. Well, in their projection, it's 106, 106 million 758 thousand 844 dollars. So that's where the 106 is coming from. 101 percent of the governor's number. Right, and if we agree to it like we did last year, shame on us. Hey, excuse me, can someone else talk? Yeah. Sure, well, I yield. I yielded right. before. Well, my my position is that we do not know the final number. And I know from the same discussions that they have that it's going to go up. So to try to change a number now, when you're telling us it's 101 of the governor's budget, is it going to be 101 at the end of the year? Everybody on the stage truly hopes so. But if we don't have a number to shoot for and we're using these variables to throw out another million when my colleague was just advocating that the bus contract was too high, so therefore we'll throw another million in. It's my position that we should stay with the governor's number for now. Do I want the schools funded at a much higher rate? Everybody on the stage does. But to keep playing this back and forth, that's too much money there, add another million here, I don't understand what we're accomplishing. It's my position is we've got to be careful with every dollar, and when the, when the budget is finally reconciled, then we'll have our number. Then we'll fight for the 101. That fight is not today. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Green. Any further discussion? Um, can I just 
ask what the final number that the motion's on is for a second? So the motion originally was for 106,642,648. Correct. It was further amended to add to it, now making it 108,242,648. So um, Mr. Hetzler and I were sitting over here and we did the math of the 101%, but that brought it to $107,709,074, but I might be mistaken, so. There's different numbers. Okay, I apologize, sorry. <laughs> different numbers. I yield. Thank you. Any further discussion, Mr. Aguil? Yeah, so, you know, we talk about what we need in the district. So I'd like to ask the superintendent uh, what his feeling is on what our needs are in the district and whether we have the needs in our classrooms across our, all of our schools that we deserve to be having 101% minimum of the final number. Because I think he, he really has been fighting hard across the state for the equitable funding. And to me, that means let's go for the gusto because we have those type of needs. I think the house number was something that was guaranteed, uh, but I'd like to hear his take on it. So it is actually only been two years. So this will be the third fiscal year if it happens that the House and the Senate have come out better than the governor. Uh, that's not historically accurate that that happens every year. Uh, and particularly interesting that in Democratic administrations that doesn't happen. So with the Republican and the Democrat House and Senate, that has happened uh, over the last two years. We've been very uh, strategic in our, under my administration's uh, budget development process uh, to always come in uh, above what the governor's number is uh, fighting for everything that we think that we need uh, in order to, uh, and just don't forget, some places, you know, people do budgets and they come in at $10 million more and say, here it is, and then everyone say, oh my God, cuts. And we've, we don't budget that way. We use a zero-based process, we get to a figure, and then we add to it. Uh, I'm confident with the 101% request that we've asked for uh, that we can meet the needs uh, that we have in the system coupled with the additional one-time expenses of monies that we're currently spending that were awarded at the last school committee meeting. And if health insurance continues to uh, show what it's showing, there may be even some more money uh, at the end of the fiscal year in that regard. And on top of that, we were also just awarded another $800,000 <coughs> essentially almost for, uh, for the uh, final installment of the uh, hurricane relief dollars. So, in terms of where we are financially, uh, 101, I want to be, so 101, let's just say this, 101 is an <coughs> aspirational, symbolic point. That means we're better than the foundation. Because the foundation just means we're getting the minimum. So we always want to be above the minimum. Because you guys are better than that, right? We're better than that. So we should always be above that minimum. I would like to get to a point where every year it's just automatic that we get 101%. And then over the next few years it grows, 102, 103. But the reality is in the gateway cities, 85% of our funding comes from the state. And that's really what the argument in equity is trying to address right now. So having said that, to answer Mr. Aguirre's question, I'm confident with the figure I put forward or you should fire me not being from being your superintendent because I wouldn't be doing my job. I'm the fiscal agent of the system in terms of my fiduciary responsibilities to make sure I provide uh, an ethical and moral uh, uh, budget figure to ensure the education of all of our students. I feel that I've done that. I like the fact that we're talking about asking for more, but the figure that we have to send down is the figure and then the articulation of the symbolic of where we end up. I'd love to end up at 101 at the end, but you know is with health insurance and how those things uh, uh, roll out. So I would ask the committee to vote on a figure with, and I might be out of line here, but maybe not with an additional dollar figure, but really with a, 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 a statement from the committee that we'd like to be at 101 of the final number when, when, the, when, the, when the whole budget is uh, signed by the governor at the very end of the process. We don't know what that figure will be, uh, but that to me, uh, would really be, uh, 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 I think, a win for uh, the city and the kids that we serve. Any further discussion on the amended motion? Mr. Chairman, <coughs> if the amended motion 
does not pass. Do we revert back to the original motion? Thank you. Stagia? Yeah, just to comment on this, what the superintendent said. I have a lot of respect for the superintendent. And I have a lot of respect for the work that he's doing around the state, arguing for the Foundation Budget Review Commission that states that cities like Fall River <clears throat> need additional funds. And we've had several conversations. I've had them with Mr. Almeida as well. The fact is, if we don't take votes, sort of, uh, t but they're tough votes to put people on the spot and say, if you're going to commit and say you're committing to 101%, let it be a real 101%, and I don't think we should be talking about 101%. And I, th I think it's difficult to go around the state saying how w underfunded our cities are, how needy our students are, how we have so many needs that we can't fund to say now, yeah, we got enough for what we need. I was mad about that last year in a conversation that we've had, and I'll be just as mad this year because it is better. We do have some funds. But quite frankly, if nobody's going to just go out and say, we're going to be at 100 percent, and that's it. That's all we can afford. Just be transparent about it. Why the hell does everybody keep saying 101 percent? Say we're going to fund the schools at a minimum, 100 percent, and that's it. Just leave it as that. That's the committee, the city, and the mayor. If that's what you're going to do, and just say 100 percent, you can probably justify. It. Go ahead, do it. But I'm sick and tired of having people keep saying we're funded at 101, we're funded at 101, we're funded at 101. Then when we get to be at 100, we say, okay, that's enough. We had our needs for this year. And then we see all the scores come in and say how lousy the scores are and how much needs we have and all this other stuff. It's getting sickening already with the 101% argument. So if you don't support it, don't support it. But I don't want to hear at every meeting about we, we have needs and we can't do this and that. With that, I yield. Any further discussion? Roll call on the amended motion. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? No. Mr. Costa? No. Mr. Hetzel? No. Mr. Corey? No. Um, Mr. Martins? Mayor Mr. Mr. Uh, Chairman. Hold on, Mr. Uh, Coogan. So the amendment fails on the main motion, $106,642,648 as presented by the school administration. Roll call. Miss, uh, offer amendment. An amend, so we got a, an, an amendment to the number, the 106. The 108 failed. So, okay. So we're right. So we're back to the main motion. You want to make an amendment, another amendment. What, what's that? That the additional line read that the final number after reconciled by the House and the Senate um, is 101% for the Fall River Public Schools. Okay. So the motion is 106,642,648. As the placeholder. Your amendment is to add language that at the end of the state budgetary process that that number will re reflect 101 percent correct of the foundation budget right okay so there was amend another amendment made to the main motion is there a second on that second seconded by mr hetzler any discussion on that Sagia. i guess it's just i don't understand why we're taking this vote when we just had a chance to vote on the same exact thing, other than that the, what we actually voted, what, ac what you guys actually voted down was actually a number. Now we're gonna vote on a symbolic piece of verbiage that means nothing <coughs> other than the, uh, it's like a statement of, uh, I guess, theory or you know, just principle. So I'm not opposed to it. I, I just think that we didn't vote on something that was actually a real number, and now we're gonna vote for <laughs> something that's more feel-good legislation. So. With that, I yield. I'll support it, but it makes no sense. Thank you, Mr. Aguilar. Mr. Coogan? But, 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 but what my colleague and my friend on the right is saying is an actual number that was not accurate. It's my position is that number will not be accurate. We all know it up here. The city knows it. The legislators know it till the final number is given. The number you put in was symbolic, Kevin. It was what you thought would be there. But by the end of the reconciliation period, we're gonna have a number, and it's my position that our goal is on a real number, we make the move to 101 if possible. And that's what my motion says. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Coogan. I'll just say this, that obviously everyone here wants additional dollars. But I have to remind this committee that the city has the amount of money it has. We're already sending down a budget 
for transportation, it's two million more than what, is, what it was last year that they're gonna have to find the revenues for. By law, they're obligated to fund us at 100%, period. So we can send down ceremonial votes to make it 101, 102, 103, whatever this committee wants to in terms of above what the foundation is. The reality is that we're talking significant amount of money increase in addition to what we're getting in one-time money for the hurricane relief money that we're getting, in addition to the money that we're getting um, this year in FY19 um, for the health care that obviously is trending lower than expected. Again, I, I, I want to reiterate this. The city has an, a finite amount of money, and I think to say we want it to be 101% of the final foundation number is, is great, um, but the reality is that we've already heard here tonight that 101% of the governor's number, which we know is not gonna be the final number, is sufficient to do the work that's necessary. Um, it includes 65 additional positions. So um, obviously if the Senate and House reconcile their number and our foundation budget um, increases, which we all anticipate it will, the number we're talking about here tonight, the 106 million, or Mr. Aguiar's proposal of 108 million and change, my guess is it's gonna be exceeding the, both those numbers um, at 100%. So to ask for 101, when we already know we can meet our needs with 101% of the number we know now, um, again, I think it's more ceremonial than it is um, what the city can actually put forth in terms of education. So. Um, any further discussion? I'll let any of my colleagues have the last Any word. clarification? Sure. Did you just say that you thought the number is at the, the minimum is going to be higher than the 108? Yeah. That we just voted down? Mm -hmm. Right. I think at the end of the day, when, when the, the House and Senate reconcile their numbers, I think 100% of our foundation budget will be close to 108, if not more. I, I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just wondering why you voted against the other motion. That's my point. Because... Just, be I mean, if we think it's going to right. be higher than 108, let's vote for 106. I, I yield. Well, the 108, to answer your question, Mr. Aguiar, was, if I understood it correctly, you said, I just want to, I want to add $1.6 million to the number we already knew without having any sense as to the, the reality of, of what the number was going to be. Because I asked, of one point, you think it was, you said one point, 5%, I think it was, of what we had before us, correct? No, I thought it was going to go up by at least 1%. I was trying to make this 1%. the floor. So my point was to say that the floor right now is 100% that we know of, which is the governor's number. Mm -hmm. I was saying that I think the floor of, to get to 100% is going to be higher. And then I put 1.6 million as my motion that failed, but you just said that you think it's going to come in even higher than that as the floor. So you're thinking the floor is going to be over 108, but we're going to pass a budget of 106. That's the only thing I'm trying to figure out. Right. I, think we, I think we just have to understand that if we're going to say, and this is the last time I'm going to talk on it, I promise, <laughs> if we're going to say it's, we're, we're happy with 100%, that's fine. Let's just say it. If we want to say 101, then let's stick to our guns and go 101 along the, across the board. That's the only real, I'm not trying to argue with my colleagues mm -hmm. or public or anybody. All I'm saying is that if we say 101, let's just be true to it and say we're going to give 101 of the end number. I yield. Roll call. Mr. Aguil. Yes. Mr. Coogan. Yes. Mr. Costa. No. Mr. Hetzel. Yes. Mr. Corey. Yes. Mr. Martins. Mayor Correa. Motion passes 4-1. The motion will reflect 106,642,648 with the added language that the school budget, the school operating budget be 101% of whatever the final foundation budget is um, from the House and the Senate once it's reconciled. Item number seven is a discussion and a vote to approve the proposed fiscal year 2020 transportation budget for the floor of a school committee. Is there a motion? Make a motion we approve, uh, we recommend approving the fiscal year 2020 transportation budget to the four public schools totaling $11,959,056 to the city. A motion made by Mr. Hetzler. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Coogan. Mr. Aguiar. If I could have uh, Mr. Almeida come up.
At the present time, is the city prepared to fund 11.9 million? No. How much are they prepared to fund? I don't have an exact number, but they told us the 11.9 was, was too high at this time. So how much can they, how much did they tell you that they can approve? They, they didn't give us an exact dollar amount of what they can approve. All, the, all we were told was the number was too high at this time. Did anybody ask? Superintendent, yourself, anybody? So superintendent. Uh, you know, they would just want to pay less than $11.9 million. So no. No, but I mean, we've already talked about how we can get to 11.2 and then hopefully even below that. I'd like to get in the $10 million mm -hmm. figure, and that's what we're going to be shooting for. So they haven't shared with you any information relative to what they're expected to put in their placeholder for their budget? This is what the intent of the meeting is uh, this week. The joint meeting? So my recommendation would be just to try and get some information before uh, Thursday night because I read the paperwork that we have here that they're going to give a presentation but not answer questions potentially. So you might need to try and get us some of the information, but I'm just curious to see what they're, in the grand scheme of their budget, in light of all the discussions we had, of what they're ready to support. Because I'm told that they were putting the $9 million figure in from, like we were, thinking Mr. Labrie gave us the right information, we're gonna be close. So I think they're plugging 9 million until, but cutting 2.9 million is, by getting rid of some roots and a little bit of tweaking here and there is, you can work magic, Mr. Almeida, but I don't know about getting to the nine million. So uh, with that, I am going to not support this for that reason uh, that we talked about before. And uh, I think we need to do some work. I yield. Thank you, Mr. Agad. Mr. Corey? Yeah, I just want to add, um, it's, um, when I see a figure of 11, nine, uh, I start to get very anxious because it's just, it's just out of sight. And I just wonder where the contracts are going to um, in every five-year period. Are we going to be facing these astronomical rises every budget season, like we did last year, again this year, and for the same reasons as Mr. Almeida just con concluded, uh, I, I find it difficult to support this. And it has nothing to do with uh, the superintendent or our body here. It has to do with that figure. Of eleven point nine million dollars, and so I just I, I find it very hard to support. With that, I yield. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Mr. Almeida, yes. the eleven million nine hundred fifty-nine thousand fifty-six dollars is the total cost as we know it to be for fiscal twenty, fiscal year twenty. Yes, sir. So whether the city can afford it or not, that number represents the cost that's. At this point, that we know, it's going to cost us to transport kids next year. This is the known cost for FY20 based right. on the bids that have been received and everything that we know. Yes. At this point. Yes, sir. Okay. So regardless if the city can afford it or not, they can put whatever number they want. At the end of the day, if that number holds true with what it's going to cost us to transport students, afford it or not, they're going to be left holding Correct. the bill regardless. Correct. So they can put whatever number they want in there, but the reality is that. Fiscal year 20, when we close out the books, if 11.9 is what was needed to transport our kids, they still got to come up with the difference. They do. Right. Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Agio. No. Mr. Coogan. Yes. Mr. Costa. Yes. Mr. Hetzel. Yes. Mr. Corey. No. Mr. Martins. Mayor Correa. Motion carries three to two. Item number eight is vote to refer to fiscal year 2020 annual budget of Florida schools to the Florida City Council for approval. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Was a motion made and seconded? You referring, Mr. Superintendent, the. So if you, it's uh, tab number eight. Including so the, the indirects? Yes. So it's the operations plus the transportation and we articulated what the total is including the indirects and it was the same figure that we discussed earlier so item number eight is a fiscal year 2020 annual budget of the forest school committee so we're not including transportation because we don't send transportation as part of our operating budget yes we do 
we send them two separate two separate lineups, right? Yeah. So we don't combine them because transportation doesn't become part of our operating budget. So the number you're asking us to send there is $160,662,706, which is the indirect cost as well as the operating budget. So we send them as two appropriations. Right. So it's the school appropriation of 106, 642, 648, mm -hmm. and it's the transportation appropriation for 11959056. So those will be the two appropriations that go down. <coughs> then the agenda is incorrect because the fiscal year 2020 annual budget, you're telling me that we send the transportation with the operating budget combined? No, no, we, we, send, them, we send them separate. Right. We send them separately. So we'll ask for two motions. Right, so there's gonna be a motion for the 2020 annual budget. And, and, and Correct. And we already approved in seven the total for transportation. So why would we have to do that again? Because this is the motion to refer it to the city council as well. So we have to take- So it's just to approve and this is to refer? Correct. Okay, Correct. I stand corrected. Yep. So the motion to, for the fiscal year 2020 annual budget of the Forest School Committee to the city council for approval in the amount of $106,642,648, correct? Yes, sir. Was there a motion to that effect? There is, Mr. Chairman. So my motion, and can I just have a point of information for a second? I believe I already did this. I believe I already we approved with my previous motions, approved the budget and the transportation and said descendable to the city council. But for clarity on the agenda, I'll make a motion again to send the annual budget of the former public schools totaling $106,642,648 mm -hmm. and the transportation budget I'll take that as a separate motion because right. it's two different Sorry. appropriations. So just the annual budget of 106 million, 642 and 648 dollars to the city council. Okay. Motion made. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Coogan. Discussion on that? Mr. Aguia. Just to be uh, clear, Superintendent did mention that this is not approving the line items within, uh, just that that's still work to be done. Mm -hmm. But when it gets sent to the council, they're going to want to see the line items. So whatever timing that is, you know, just uh, I want to be clear that we haven't had a dialogue publicly here about things that are in the budget and, and the like. So we still have time. I understand what the superintendent said, but I just wanted to make sure the committee knew that that's still an ongoing process. Right. It, it's always an ongoing process. The, but even the before it's can approved change. officially right. from us. Absolutely. But Thank you. Just, I yield. Just to be clear, so the committee I can at any time make transfers within the budget, which would a sense change any line item they could add, subtract, transfer money. Um, at any time during the budget process. Right. Mr. Corey? Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Vice Chairman, so um, I didn't support the transportation budget on the previous motion, but I support the superintendent's budget. So how would I go about this? Did, was his motion uh, separating these so two items? That's correct. So the okay. motion is going to be for the operating budget, the annual operating budget for the four of the schools, um, $106,642,648. Thank you. There was a motion made. There was a second. Any discussion further? Roll call. Mr. Aguia. Yes. Mr. Coogan. Yes. Mr. Costa. Yes. Mr. Hatza. Yes. Mr. Corey. Yes. Mr. Martins. Mayor Correa. Is there a motion to refer at $11,959,056, which represents the projected transportation costs for FY20 for the four of public schools. Is there a motion made so by moved. Mr. Hetzel? Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Coogan. Any discussion on that motion? Here an unroll call. Mr. Aguia. No. Mr. Coogan. Yes. Mr. Costa. Yes. Mr. Hetza. Yes. Mr. Corey. No. Mr. Martins. Mayor Correa. Motion passes 3-2. Discussion of vote to approve. Request for approval of the proprietary items for the new Durfee High School is presented by Mr. Pacheco. Is there a motion? So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzel. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Coogan. Mr. Chico, would you come to the podium? Members may have some questions. Mr. Corey? No. Floor is yours. Oh, Mr. Aguia. Just a quick question. I believe these are things that you have no choice in. We're not locking ourselves into proprietary items that we don't need. So these are items that the technology group got together and looked at and felt that um, these are the items that are 
district, not necessarily district-wide, but that we're trying to make district-wide the best performing. Um, it's all back-end equipment, but um, it, it's what's performing well for us. So we didn't want to take a chance of low bidders um, and not getting what we needed for the high school. Right, so it's in this district's best interest and it's not going to jack the price up or anything like no, that? No, it's not. With that, I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Any further discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Mr. Aguiar. Yes. Mr. Coogan. Yes. Mr. Costa. Yes. Mr. Hetzler. Yes. Mr. Corey. Yes. Mr. Martin. Mayor Correa. Item number 10, vote to approve the third quarter revolving funds is presented by Mr. Aguiar. Is there a motion? So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzler. Is there a second? Yeah, Seconded by Mr. Coogan. Any discussion? Is there any need for tra uh, transfer? Uh, nothing yet. For the revolving account? Yeah. Uh, no. So the only thing that we're requesting here is the overtime for the outside of outside events. It's uh, totals twenty two thousand two ninety five. And after 50. that, we still have money in that account. We're not. We do. So um, currently, the account prior to that overtime being transferred is one hundred forty three thousand one thirty seven sixty nine. With your approval tonight, uh, with the overtime being transferred, it'll be 120,842.19. And we've been doing this during the school year, so the account, the original account with all this money that came into it, is that gonna have a surplus? Yes. So the overtime account that was budgeted basically with kind of paying out of this and that account should have a little cushion in it? Correct. Correct. Thank you, I yield. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Any further discussion? Mr. Corey? Yeah, so Mr. Aguiar, I was very pleased to see on, uh, on page one of this report the use of schools line item. Yeah, I was very pleased to see that, you know, there's, there's some revenues being generated there with the use of our school buildings. And so I just want to know what the think is on behalf of the administration moving forward. Are there, are there other creative ways that you guys are maybe thinking of using the schools? I'm thinking about the uh, community arts center at Durfee, the big auditorium, especially when the new building gets built, that's gonna be a standalone building, but well, we can market that. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. concerts, uh, community events, it's a great way for the uh, school district to, to add, you know, get some very uh, great revenues coming on in. So I, I would encourage that you guys keep putting your collective heads together and thinking about ways to generate. I went to, uh, uh, Mr. Coogan and I visited Morton on a Sunday and saw the school being used uh, for the purposes of uh, um, a service and it was just an outstanding thing. And uh, there was a lot of respect paid to our school property and uh, a very, very good thing to say. I just wanted to praise you on that. Thank you. With that I yield. Thank you, Mr. Corey. Any further discussion? Roll call. Mr. Aguiar. Yes. Mr. Coogan. Yes. Mr. Costa. Yes. Mr. Hetzel. Yes. Mr. Corey. Yes. Mr. Martins. Mayor Correa. Item number 11 is a vote to approve the year date budget report as presented by Mr. Almeida. Is there a motion? So moved. Made by Mr. Coogan. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Hetzel. Any discussion on the year to date? Mr. Aguiar. Just uh, one question on the student transportation line. So, the, uh, if we add it up and are we over or under for the current year? We, we are gonna be over by roughly $200,000. Over meaning like in the negative? Yes. And the city's gonna have to pay that? Yes. Are they aware of that? Yes. So, how would it look on here? When I'm looking at this line, like uh, the 533000, mm -hmm. is there a way I would know that from here or is it? No, no, because we still have, we have one other contract that has to be increased. So you'll, you'll see it upcoming in the next meeting. And then it'll make these numbers so that what's currently 87 to the good will be 200 Correct. to the negative. Correct. But they're aware of that they in are. the current. They are. Because net school spending in the current year is currently not, not looking good. No. All right, I yield. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Aguiar. Any further discussion? Roll call. Roll call. Oh, sorry. Mr. Aguiar? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetza? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martin? Mayor Correa. There are some items listed for your information. There's a motion to accept and place on file. So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzler, is there a second? Second. 
Seconded by Mr. Coogan. All in favor? Aye. Roll call. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Motion carries. Next item is uh, new business. Is there any new business? Any topics that could not reasonably be anticipated by the chair 48 hours prior to this meeting? Hearing none, we do have a request for executive session. I'm going to ask um, Attorney Assad for the purposes of public notification what the reasons for executive session this evening would be. With respect to executive session, first would be National Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A7, to review and approve executive session committee minutes for March 18, 19, 2019, regular meeting of the Forever School Committee. Second would be National Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all civil service clerical employees of the Forever School System, represented by the Forever Department of Civil Service Clerical Employees Association as the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on a bargaining position of the committee. National Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all paraprofessional employees of the Forever School System, represented by the Forever Federation of Paraprofessionals, as the chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on the bargaining position of the committee. National Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining relative to all maintenance employees of the Florida School System, represented by the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees, Council 93, Local 1118, as the Chair has determined that an open session may have a detrimental impact on a bargaining position of the committee. We would reconvene the main may statements at that time. Thank you, Attorney Saad. Is there a motion for executive session? So moved. Made by Mr. Hetzel. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Corey. Roll call. Mr. Agia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martin? Mayor Correa? This committee will stand in recess.
I'd like to call the Forest School Committee meeting for Monday, April 8th, 2019, back to order. Madam Secretary, would you please call the roll? Mr. Aguia? Here. Mr. Coogan? Here. Mr. Costa? Here. Mr. Hetzler? Here. Mr. Corey? Here. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa? As a result of executive session, are there any motions to be made? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the executive session committee meeting <coughs> committee minutes for the March 18, 2019 regular meeting. There's a motion made by Mr. Hetzler. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Corey. Roll call. Mr. Aguia? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzler? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. Any other motions? I'd like to make another motion that we accept the contract and it's negotiated between maintenance employees and four of a school system represented by American Federation of State County Municipal Employees, Council 93, Local 1118, and the Forever Public School. There's a motion made by Mr. Hetzler. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Aguiar. Roll call. Mr. Aguiar? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? Yes. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. Are there any other motions? I'd like to make the motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn has been made by Mr. Hetzel. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Mr. Corey. Roll call. Mr. Aguiar? Yes. Mr. Coogan? Yes. Mr. Costa? Yes. Mr. Hetzel? Yes. Mr. Corey? You got that. Mr. Martins? Mayor Correa. This meeting stands adjourned.